John Kirby, White House spokesman for the National Security Council. John, thank you for joining us Thanks, this morning. We just heard Martha talk about uh, the airports. We know in the past Israel has bombed the airports in Lebanon back in 2005. Do you expect it to happen again? Have you been given a heads up? Uh, we're in constant touch with our Israeli counterparts, George, as you might imagine. Uh, we want to make sure that there are still commercial options available for Americans to leave, and they should be leaving now while those options are available, but I won't get ahead of operations. Hey, you won't get ahead of operations. The United States has been trying very hard to prevent an escalation. Absolutely. The president has been in constant contact uh, with Israel, but they don't seem to be heeding his advice. We, uh, again, I think we don't believe it's in Israel's interest for this to escalate, for there to be an all-out war there on the north, on that blue line between uh, Israel and Lebanon. If the goal, George, is to get families back to their homes, uh, we think there's there's a better way to do that than an all-out conflict. Um, the Israelis will tell you uh, yesterday that they had to take some of these strikes because they were about to be imminently attacked by, by Hezbollah. They do have a right to defend themselves. But what we're going to keep doing is talking to them about trying to find a diplomatic solution here, a way to de-escalate the tensions um, so that the families can go back in a sustainable way. We just heard from Ian that the ball is now in Hezbollah's court. Israel bracing for a response this morning. Do we have any sense of what's going to come next? I won't get into the intelligence assessment. Certainly, uh, uh, we have seen the rhetoric coming out of uh, Nezrallah and uh, his leadership about uh, how they want to respond to this. Uh, that's obviously uh, going to be something we'll monitor very, very closely. I will just tell you that while we won't get involved in the conflict itself there or around that blue line because we don't want to see a conflict at all, uh, you know, we'll do what we have to continue to do to, to make sure Israel can defend itself. Let's turn to the war in Ukraine. Robin spoke with President Zelensky and the, and the First Lady of Ukraine yesterday. We're going to have more of that interview coming up later today. He seems to believe that peace is closer than we think if the United States and the Western allies continue to provide Ukraine with the assistance it needs. He will continue to get that assistance. You know, he's going to meet with the president Thursday uh, back in Washington after the U.N. General Assembly concludes. Um, and I fully expect that you'll hear the president uh, talk about continued and additional support to Ukraine as we head into the fall and winter months, particularly as Mr. Putin tries to weaponize the winter weather going after their energy grid and infrastructure. So President Zelensky can rest assured that he'll continue to have the uh, United States support and the other 50 some odd nations that are provided. Are we seeing the outlines of a possible peace? Well, look, President Zelensky, Zelensky said he's going to come with a victory plan. We haven't seen that plan. We look forward to talking to him about what this looks like, what the components are, um, and uh, we'll see where it goes from there. What we've said all along, George, is whenever and however this war ends, it's got to end in a way that is um, that is in keeping with President Zelensky's view of what a just peace needs to look like. Um, and it has to factor in the Ukrainian people's desires and aspirations. So whatever that is, again, we'll look forward to talking to him about that. Uh, but we'll be supportive uh, as we move forward. Finally, the president speaking to the United Nations today. What's his message? Message is that, um, for, number one, uh, we've accomplished a lot on the world stage in the United States over the last three and a half years, but revitalized our alliances and partnerships, really advanced our national security interests around the world, working on transnational problems like climate change and clean energy transition, uh, fentanyl pre prevention. Uh, there's been an awful lot of work that the United States has done, and he's going to make the case for why it's important for America to continue to lead and why we have to all work together, the whole United Nations, to try to really make these changes sustainable and enduring for the long term. John Kirby, thanks as always. Thank you.